Okay. I will uh, officially call the Board of Park Commissioners regular meeting for Monday, May 8th, 2023 to order. I uh, want to thank everybody for being here. It really does uh, mean a lot to see so many folks here. Uh, before we roll into um, your comments, I wanted to know if anyone has any uh, announcements for the good of the body. No announcements. Okay, then moving on. Were there any other comments beside? Oh, that's a that's a, that's a great point. We are going to be talking specifically uh, regarding the new items for consideration. Wanted to know if anybody was here that wanted to speak on another issue other than uh, the Sleepy Hollow Park uh, uh, discussion. Okay, seeing none, <laughs> and that's great. No, listen, that's that's fantastic. Seeing none. We're gonna go ahead and move into our new items for consideration. So folks, the way that we're gonna do this, just so, makes, so we make certain uh, that everybody's voice is heard, uh, we are going to hear the presentation uh, first, and then we are going to read emails, and then we're gonna allow everybody who signed up a chance to come up to the podium and speak, so everybody gets a chance uh, to have their voices heard, have their question answered, and uh, we can talk about uh, our thoughts and how we proceed. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, have that uh, first presentation. All move right. Oh, uh, I, we're, we're going to move right into to that before the minutes. I would like to just go ahead and respect everybody who's here. Okay. Well, very good. So just want to let you guys know that uh, Jerry Ford, she's from our real estate uh, department. She is going to be doing a presentation and sharing some information and facts about uh, one of our neighbors that has some interest in a part of Sleepy Hollow. Okay. So what we really wanted to do is present the facts and information um, and have discussions. This is an opportunity for the Board of Park Commissioners to have discussion, an opportunity for the public to share their thoughts and concerns with the Board of Park Commissioners. And we take a lot of this information and share it with um, the city manager and with council. So okay. With that, I'll pass it on to uh, Jerry Ford. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jerry Ford, and I'm with the City of Wichita's Office of De Development Services with the City Manager's Office. Uh, today, I just wanted to share some information with you about the uh, Sleepy Hollow Park area. Um, the City of Wichita has been approached by an adjacent property owner of just seeking our interests and the possibility of possibly acquiring um, a portion of Sleepy Hollow Park. As everybody's aware, if you're not already, Sleepy Hollow Park is a what we would call a linear park, and it currently is uh, runs from Murdoch on the north to Rutan on the west. Vassar, between Vassar and Rutan, is the subject parcel. We have a 1.46 acre parcel, which includes some of our street right of way as well. But it's this parcel that's on the west side of Vassar that is uh, surrounded by an adjacent property owner who has reached out to the city about its interest in possibly um, doing a transaction with the city for redevelopment purposes. The property is currently improved with, it's about 1.2 acres once you take out that street right away. And it is currently improved. It has some playground equipment on it. There are some benches. Uh, there's water, uh, walking paths, water fountains. And there's also a drainage way that um, bisects the property. Um, the, the property does have a, a decent tree canopy on it as well. There is a bridge that connects both sides of the park. It's currently zoned TF3, and that is considered a multifamily of moderate density zoning. So if this property were to be redeveloped, the any party that were to redevelop this, um, any development that's superior to the current zoning, it would have to still go before the Planning Commission in an application to rezone. In response to the adjacent property owner's request for a possible sale, the city is opening up the opportunity to present a proposal. It's, uh, we expect to go out for a request for proposal 
and the request for a proposal would be open and advertised for 30 days. We're asking um, any proposer to provide us context and information on what it is they plan to do with that site. How do they plan to develop it? Uh, how is it going to be used? How would it be beneficial to the community? Um, in addition to that, this, we are looking for a definitive use as well. If there is going to be a proposed development, we're not looking at speculation. We're not looking at something that they say could be this and then turned into something else. We're looking for a very specific use. It is at this time as well that the city is putting a listing price on this property based off of the what we estimate to be the land value. And so the city is currently going to include an advertising price as a minimum price that we would accept at 480000 And that is what I have for you today in our proposal for an RFP. Okay. I think we, if there's any questions from the board first, and then we have some emails that came in, and we want to share those emails as well. Okay, so from the board, any questions for staff on this proposal? Yeah, how yes. did we uh, come up with the $480,000 price tag? We actually contracted a third party independent appraiser who performed a commercial analysis on this, or a commercial appraiser who looked at this property and determined a site value. In addition to that, we estimated some additional compensation for possibly relocating or creating new park improvements elsewhere within the Sleepy Hollow Park Corridor. Have we calculated the, I know we've talked a lot about trees all this year in the park board. Have we looked at what that tree canopy is and what it would cost for us to replace that tree canopy if something were to happen? Uh, not to my knowledge, we haven't. I know the tree canopy out there is very mature. Um, and so, like the significance of the trees, I don't know as far as health-wise and such how much significance they have other than you have a mature canopy. Uh, and then you mentioned drainage way. Uh, do we know, like, does that mean that this isn't a flood? Is it a flood zone or what does that mean for the... This is just part of the drainage infrastructure that runs from north to south and currently this drainage system it drains from the park up on the north, the golf course actually, and it drains through the Sleepy Hollow Park and part of that property, the drainage system is actually encapsulated now and underneath Wesley Parking. Okay. This drainage system then drains east, or excuse me, west towards the canal route. Okay. So it wouldn't, if something were to be developed, it wouldn't affect the neighborhood, like the neighborhood wouldn't all of a sudden start flooding more than? No, the, no. no. They would have to, continue building on up and over sure. the drainage so it would continue to drain. And in fact, they probably might even make some improvements okay. to a certain degree. It's possible as well that the, Depart the Kansas Department of Water Resources could be involved in the permitting process of this as well, just because of the drainage system. But it would be encapsulated to meet and exceed demand. The, there's also uh, with the, so you mentioned uh, there would be potential park improvements in other areas of the park. Have we identified or have those spaces previously been identified? And would the 480 price tag, um, I don't know, allow for the placement of a new play place and enhancements to the park that don't already exist? I don't, we, I don't have a lot of information okay. on proposed park improvements. Okay. I know that the park equipment there on site now does meet the park department standards mm -hmm. and could possibly be relocated in whole or in part to maybe possibly the remainder, mm -hmm. some other portion of this park or even another park within the, the city system. Um, we, we don't have a definitive plan yet as to what would be done. Um, at this point, I think, you know, it, there's a lot that has to be looked yeah. at as far as drainage is concerned um, and the, the amount of room that there is to be able to put improvements in. So I think that's going to be a park decision, park board, park department sure. decision later down the road if, if something were to occur. Thank you. So the suggested amount, what was that, 480? Yes. Yeah, is hopefully just the beginning portion of some type of negotiation. 
But the idea is that all that funding would go back into that area, whether it's this exact park, the extended area. There were some ideas about, hey, maybe we put in a, um, a walking trail. Maybe there's an opportunity for some fitness equipment. Um, this is, these are all things that are mm -hmm. just proposed. Nobody's yeah. made any decisions yet. Um, there's also been some thoughts about carving out a piece of the property that's up at Clapp Park. I'm, I'm not Clapp, at um, McDonald Golf Course. And that might be an opportunity to put in some new equipment there. These are all just suggestions and ideas. Sure. Um, so it's all part of possible negotiation. Thank you, Troy. Mm -hmm. I like to see us do our best into reinvesting into this community, uh, uh, this particular park, um, since we would be in this proposal taking away part of their park. I would like to see uh, the majority of that 480 or whatever that uh, number turns out to be go back into to new equipment um, or new trails, what have yep. you. I know a couple couple months ago we talked about the uh, the updated, uh, you know, kind of our goal of uh, we want to update X amount of, of parks to make them ADA accessible, et cetera. So maybe that's uh, something that we can look at for sleep it all up. Further questions? Sorry. Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, I'd, I'd like to go back a little bit to the price. How you, that was determined? You said sure. a third party. Uh, but we all know there's just one probable bidder on this property. So I, I'm not happy really with the situation where it's up for bid where we can't put preconditions to say you do this and we will you do this first and then we will do we will allow you to buy it sure and and part of the what the rfp process in, entails is what we're going to do is we're going to publish this and make it available for 30 days but at the same time we're going to be open and available to listen for comment and feedback from you guys so when if the time comes if there were to be some kind of a sale there could be a development agreement that would be drafted and it would include it could include these restrictions and some comments or uh, that to address comments or concerns as i mentioned i think it's all part of the negotiation if it goes down that far and when it gets down that far there's opportunities for us to negotiate um, whether it's funding or whether it's activities or equipment or other kind of expectations and that's all part of the negotiation so um, the, I think the 480 is the minimum of what we're expecting and I think there's opportunities to ask for more or expect more especially as Eddie was talking about when you're losing a piece of property we want to replace it or make enhancements to yeah. Uh, uh, to address the missing missing part. I mean, very similar to what we did over at the Hyatt. The Hyatt, we had a smaller piece of property um, and we were able to get $200,000 was the first discussion point. And I think we ended up getting a smaller amount, but we ended up getting another $10,000 to put towards trees. So. The Hyatt property was not very usable by anybody I, in the park. Where this right. is very used, very much I by told, both the employees of the hospital and I told, I, the community. I, I agree. We can tell it's used by Wesley because of all the cigarette butts that come over. So, yes. Troy, is this, uh, could you remind me, is this park owned by the city or is it owned by the park board? It's owned by the city. It's not one of the inventory parks for the Board of Park Commissioners. Okay. So, if something, if an RFP goes out, at the end of the day, it's going to go to the council? That's correct. This is going to be a council decision, not your decision. Okay. Yep. I, so the reason for us to come and speak with you today, though, is to present this information mm -hmm. and to provide an opportunity to let people know what we're looking at and mm -hmm. the possibility of redeveloping the site. If, if that were to come to fruition, we want to know what's important to you as well. So. There might be some ways with Vassar being an, a natural divider of the, the two areas, one area being very residential and one area being the hospital campus. Um, it's, you know, we could maybe ask for any kind of a developer or buyer to re require some certain aspects of their development to help soften the, the development as well. 
So your feedback is important to us so we can take these things into consideration. Further questions? Yeah, Troy, this is one of the older parks, right? Do you know where this fits kind of in the timeline or was it larger at one point before the hospital bought up other? It was built in 1928. Okay. 28? 26 is what I read on the web page. So we're looking at almost 100 years for that park. Already. That's correct, yes. Are there any other questions from the park board? Further questions? So I just one hypothetical. Let's say three years from now, Wesley decides they're going to expand again, and now they want to take over Vassar and the rest of the park. Then the, what the question is, we kind of open the door to taking one part of it. What opens the door not to later on, three years from now, then take the rest of it? Ultimately, it's council's decision, right. and whether they say no or not, it doesn't make any sense that they would be interested in any other, any other piece of the property. And, and I'm just trying to give the facts. I'm not. I'm just giving facts right here. Um, Wesley owns three sides of this park, um, and I, th I think what they're looking for is to kind of make some kind of continuous development uh, from the current parking garage through this property into the next property. Uh, just trying to be more efficient and, and this is just, uh, I, I think this is what their intent is, is to create something there that's um, a lot more, what's the word I'm looking for, um, attractive, that's, that could be used more efficiently and effectively, and not just a surface lot. So I think they have some other ideas of using several pieces of property that they own to create something that they need. Further questions? Um, before we roll into uh, the emails and then the speakers here, I just wanted to comment and thank uh, the people who, who came, not only today, thank you for being here today. It really does show uh, that people in Wichita care about their public lands, they care about their public assets because they're they are the lifeblood of our quality of life in Wichita. I also want to say thank you to the 26 people we had gathered at Sleepy Hollow in 90 degree weather last night. Uh, really had great conversation. I will let, you know, this is, as far as I'm concerned, this is time for the park board to be listening. And, and so I'll let everybody comment. But I mean, I, I can just say again what I told folks um, when we met last night. Like, look, my, my opinion is, is like, I just, I get a little bit of a twist every time I think about losing park acreage. And, but at the same time, what I heard from everybody was they want to be a good neighbor. Everybody from the neighborhood perspective wants to be a good neighbor you know, with Wesley because they know that they're so important to the community, to the neighborhood especially. They provide jobs and a lot of opportunity there. Um, but you know, I, I was just really impressed with how passionate and how like there's folks who've been there for decades. And this is a really important issue for a lot of folks there. So I, I again, wanted to thank you. Respect your time. Like, let's go ahead and, and read in these emails if we could, Penny. And I just wanted to let you know when we do speakers, I'll read off the list. I'll let anybody speak who, even if you didn't sign in or if you wanted to cancel, you can decide not to. We'll keep it around three minutes a piece just because, you know, we got other stuff hopefully to do. But listen, folks, we, we've had discussions around uh, uh, golf. Years ago, we had really contentious discussions around aquatics. And heck, you know, pickleball was a really big deal that, you know, frankly, we worked through. But, you know, frankly, the, the, it, it gets better when more people show up, make their voices heard. This is exactly what you need to be doing because when you get to make your voice heard, uh, that's when we can make some progress based on your feedback and, and have everybody walk away feeling good about uh, what's going to happen. So thank you so much for being here. I, I was going to throw another one out, but I decided not to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know what you meant, but... Another challenge that we worked through, clap. Oh, yes, of course. Or who am I, who, what else are we missing? Well, I, I wasn't here for that. I was going to mention uh, Veterans Memorial Park. Mm -hmm. flag. My gosh. Okay, well, got through, <laughs> worked through the Confederate flag. Issue. We can get through some. <laughs> okay. Pawnee Perry Park. Yeah. Pawnee Perry Park, another one. Well, folks, but... Ultimately, at the end of the day, we said this last night that, you know, we're all Wichitans, like, we're all working in the city together, trying to make it the best place we can. So you being here today really is a testament to that. Thank you very much. Okay. Benny? Okay, the first email is from Mr. Ben Blankley. He states, 
Park Commissioners and staff, I regret that I cannot attend your meeting in person on Monday it is, as it is during my work hours. My spouse Liz Anderson and I have owned our home in McDonald, north of Sleepy Hollow for over 10 years. We have an eight-year-old child from, for whom Sleepy Hollow Park is their primary park. We have been walking and biking to Sleepy Hollow Park since their birth. They call it Pirate Ship Park because the play structure is a big ship. It's a family favorite park. We have many younger families who have selected our neighborhood for the many amenities available within a short walk. It is my understanding that Wesley Medical Center is planning to purchase areas of the park as part of a replacement employee parking structure and move the public assets elsewhere. I encourage the park commissioners to consider the significant impact to the many young families that have moved into Sleepy Hollow and McDonald for whom this is their only play structure available to their children. Most of us do not have backyard play structures and rely on our park at park for recreation. Additionally, the park is heavily used by families at the hospital and employees of the hospital for breaks and lunches. Any redevelopment work must consider the current and future use patterns of this heavily utilized pocket park. The creek drainage ditch does, does need some significant work and it is often nerve wracking to parent a toddler playing near a three foot drop off into standing water. The park is often covered in litter that blows in from the hospital and I regularly bring gloves and trash bags to do cleanup when we visit. This is not unique to Sleepy Hollow Park, however, as I often see similar issues at other city parks. My opinion of the sale is also colored with the point that Wesley Medical Center, HCA Corporation, and its officers have continually pushed redevelopment of large portions of our neighborhood with little to no communication to us residents. Just like the usual, we found out about this on the park agenda through us citizens digging through public records. This is not how any community partner should communicate with the people who have lived in their literal shadow and helicopter flight path for decades. We deserve better communication from Wesley Medical Center, HCA Corporation, as they continue to heavily impact the place where we have chosen to live and build our families. <laughs> the next one's just as long. <laughs> this one is from Mr. Paul Collado. Good evening. I am a resident of the Sleepy Hollow neighborhood and recently learned that the Parks and Rec Department is considering the sale of the west portion of the main park west of Vassar, which contains a playground, to Wesley Hospital so they can use the land to expen expand their parking structure. I'm contacting you to voice my opinion as a resident of the neighborhood in opposition to this potential sale. This park and playground is used quite a bit for its intended purpose as a play place for neighborhood children. Sleepy Hollow is home for too many families of small children, mine included. The playground is a regular weekday and weekend destination for us to take our daughter and meet up with her friends in the neighborhood and play. When our families have get-togethers events, we regularly run the children down to the playground for a bit as we all live very close to the park. One family lives on the park. It would be an absolute travesty to remove such a great and usable outdoor play resource from the neighborhood families, just so the hospital can erect a larger parking structure or parking lot. I certainly hope no one on the city council or in any position of authority over this decision thinks it is wise or decent to remove a thriving green space and playground beloved, beloved by neighborhood families and children so it can be replaced by a lifeless slab of concrete and parking stalls which would be of no use to any neighborhood children and families. There have been numerous occasions when I have taken my daughter to the Sleepy Hollow playground and encountered children who were brought to the playground by parents or family members visiting a loved one in the hospital. This playground and park is a great resource for those parents and children to have a moment where they can decompress and have some enjoyment, which is necessary and beneficial when encountering the stress of being in a hospital. Any decision to remove the playground and re reduce the footprint of Sleepy Hollow Park would not be a decision in the best interest of the children and families of Sleepy Hollow. The city should not be so hasty to take away great resources to give them to private interests who obviously do not care about our children's well-being. Thanks for your time reading this. Paul Collado, Sleepy Hollow resident. Huh? Here, you can have the next couple. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, you're just reading names I'm, first. I'm just, yeah, saying who it's from and then. Okay. And normally just legal, but trying to pitch in because of all that. <laughs> just allergies and uh, communication. So, Benjamin Spell, uh, subject Sleepy Hollow Park. Uh, text, good morning, I hope that your week is off to a nice start. I wanted to reach out as I heard information about the parks department talking about selling the Sleepy Hollow Park to Wesley Hospital. I don't know details, but if this is a possibility, I wanted to share my opposition to this idea. As a resident with young children, this playground is the only play playground within walking distance to the neighborhood. It provides respite and a break to families visiting the hospital and is a strong part of the community and neighborhood. Our neighborhood and city doesn't need our parks being sold, especially for uses like parking. Thank you, Ben Spell. Um, from Jeanette uh, Harding, possible sale Sleepy Hollow Park text. Sleepy Hollow Park currently has two areas, a grassy nature area and a playground area. For the sale to not be a loss of amenities to families in the neighborhood, Wesley needs to provide a playground space that does not take away the large grassy nature area to maintain current walkability. This playground should be located between Roosevelt Hillside and Central and Ninth Streets. Anything less will take away services from neighborhoods, including McDonald and Sleepy Hollow. Thank you, Jeanette Harding. Um, from RJ, Rebecca Jansen, sale of Sleepy Hollow Park. Text to whom it may concern, I would like to state my concerns about the possible sale of a portion of Sleepy Hollow Park. I'm strongly against this happening for the following reasons. One, we need green spaces in our city for the mental and physical health of our citizens. Two, this park has been a long tradition for the residents in the area. My 40-year-old son played there and now my grandkids play there. Three, there are dozens of families in the area that utilize the park for recreation. Four families with members in the hospital use this space often to take a break from the stresses of hospitalizations of loved ones. It also gives them a space to take their little people for a break. We see this frequently uh, continued for. If we continue to let Wesley encroach into the neighborhood, what will happen to the value of Sleepy Hollow? They have already spread into the neighborhood, removing many homes. Five, Wesley Hospital owns the land across the Central Street behind the hotel in Panera. This is already a commercially zoned area. It seems to make sense to build a parking garage there as it is already being utilized in this way. Six, I don't know exactly what the plan for the land where the former Wichita Children's Home is, but this seems a much more logical location for a parking garage. Seven, being a neighbor to the parking garage on Vassar, I rarely see it actually full. Please consider the needs of your residents over the desires of a corporation. Wichita needs to maintain their parks as green spaces. The value of Sleepy Hollow Park for its residents is far more important than yet another parking garage. Thank you for your consideration, Rebecca Jansen. Uh, next from Peter Jansen, possible sale a portion of Sleepy Hollow Park, text to whom it may concern. As a neighborhood property owner, we are opposed to the potential sale of Sleepy Hollow Park to Wesley Hospital for the following reasons. One, we should be providing more parks and recreation opportunities for our youth, not taking them away, sub A. On any given day evening, you will find families enjoying the park, sub B. Families visiting patients at Wesley utilize this park for their children. Two, this will negatively impact the neighborhood charm and decrease area property values. Three, converting a designated public green space to a park, private parking garage sets a dangerous precedence for it. This would seem to me that Wesley has several options to build a garage over vast existing surface parking areas. Respectfully submitted Peter and Kay Jansen with a signature block at the bottom. Uh, Rebecca Ramey, a possible sale of portion of Sleepy Hollow Park, text, good morning, as a citizen of Wichita and located nearby the park, I would be remiss if I did not express my opposition to the sale of the park to the hospital. It would be a disservice to local families that utilize it. Please take into consideration the upset that would be caused if the playground were removed. It would certainly discourage future families from looking into the area as a residential choice as the community and access the lovely outdoor spaces were a major part of my own family's decision to make a home purchase there. Thank you for your consideration consideration, Rebecca Ramey. From Bridget Sweeney, uh, subject, please keep Sleepy Hollow Park. Text, dear park board members, this email is being sent to you regarding the possible sale of Sleepy Hollow Park. Please keep Sleepy Hollow Park. The park is used as a park by many in the community, surrounding neighborhoods, and even Wesley Hospital. Keeping Sleepy Hollow Park as a park is valuable because it is a safe space or safe place for families and individuals to enjoy the outdoors, come together, relax, and de-stress. Supporting practices like going outside to the park improves strength and mental and physical health. Sleepy Hollow Park is so vital for the well-being of our neighborhoods and individuals who rely on it as a park. Sleepy Hollow Park is a place of respite for those who care and live nearby. Uh, and, and 
in nearby, we need to keep this park to show we support our Sleepy Hollow community and surrounding communities who use this park. My family uses this park often. It is very close to us, and we are so thankful for Sleepy Hollow Park. Thank you for your time. Sincerely, Bridget Sweeney, community resident. From Nolan Collins, subject Sleepy Hollow Park, text, good day. I find it distressing that the idea of selling a park and turning it into a parking garage has even been proposed, let alone this is up for public comment. Please look for other solutions than to blight the area further. Best regards, Nolan Collins. Uh, from Chris Green, excuse me, proposed sale of a portion of Sleepy Hollow Park text. Dear, park board, uh, dear Board of Park Commissioners, I am very concerned about the proposal to sell a portion of Sleepy Hollow Park to Wesley Medical Center. I live in the Sleepy Hollow neighborhood with my wife, Sarah, and four-year-old son, Calvin. We are regular users of the playground that I understand would be raised and relocated to make way for a parking lot on the Wesley campus. The proposed use of land after the sale is particularly upsetting. Taking away public recreation space in our neighborhood and replacing it with pavement for the parking of private vehicles would be a significant setback for our neighborhood and the community as a whole. I worry the campus and neighborhood will be an uglier, less healthy space if this proposal goes through. Wesley already operates a number of parking lots and garages on its campus, and I do not understand why building another lot would be necessary if Wesley believes they need additional parking. I wish they would share the rationale behind that desire and provide data or studies that show why this should be a pressing concern. Have they measured the utilization of existing parking? Do they have a master plan for the campus? These issues should be explored thoroughly before the city of Wichita gives any consideration to selling the land. In addition, I am staunchly opposed to any transaction that would would result in a net loss of land for parks and recreation in the neighborhood. My understanding is that one idea on the table would be to move the playground east across Vassar to the other side of Sleepy Hollow Park. This is not an acceptable alternative because it would reduce the size of the park. Public green space, uh, space is a precious resource and it should not be parted with unless it provides demonstrable gains to the public. The history of Sleepy Hollow Park reportedly dates back to the 1920s and the decisions this government makes related to it will affect generations of Wichitans who will be impacted long after the proceeds from this sale have been spent. I hope you will think deeply about these long-term consequences in your considerations. I would also like to express my concerns about the process through which the matter came to the attention of the neighborhood like many other area residents. I only learned about the proposed sale on Thursday after it appeared on the agenda for today's agenda for the park, uh, Board of Park Commissioners. I do not know of any neighbors who have heard from Wesley directly, nor do there appear to be public supporting materials that outline the scope of Wesley's plans, nor the rationale behind them. As someone who values thoughtful dialogue and discussion, this does not create a trustworthy process for public decision making. I feel left out of the loop when it comes to a decision that could have significant ramifications for my family's quality of life. It hurts when you worry that people more powerful than you are making decisions without taking your needs and wants into consideration. I have lived in Sleepy Hollow for 10 years and I've never had negative interactions with the hospital. I was born in Wesley and continue to be connected to it as an employee of an organization that was created through the proceeds of its sale to HCA Healthcare. I am proud to live next to the hospital complex and would like for their organization to be able to thrive. I just want our neighborhood's needs and interests to be factored in. I understand from homeowners who have lived here longer that there is a long and contentious history between the hospital and residents. My hope is that this proposal is not the next chapter, but for this dialogue to be productive, representatives of Wesley and the city will need to engage in open conversation about the future of the park with residents. This can't be something that is just done to us without our involvement. This could be an opportunity to build a new rapport between the hospital, the city, and the neighborhood and plan for the future together. I hope that city officials will provide the time and space for that to happen and make a requirement for any action related to the park. Thank you for considering this perspective. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Sincerely, Chris Green with address and contact information. I'm from Rachel Weta. A Sleepy Hollow Playground, please don't sell the land on which the Sleepy Hollow Park currently sits to Wesley. That park is much loved by the neighborhood kids and families. It would be a shame to sell such a loved and well-used community space just to make a new parking lot. Thanks, Rachel and Weta, with contact information. Um, from Chemke, uh, Catherine, and, oh, apologies, that's the email uh, title. Catherine and Forrest M. Key. Uh, regarding plans for Wesley Medical Center to purchase a portion of Sleepy Hollow Park for a future parking structure, consider other options. The existing employee parking structure bordering Vassar is not full. We walk by there regularly and it is not utilized to its full capacity. It also has a posted sign indicating that the ground floor floods and rain. So the proposed parking structure beside it would be assumed to have the same problem since there is a creek there. There is a ground lot to the south of Edgemont Street currently used for parking so a new structure could be placed there close to the central given the history that Wesley's plans usually get approved in that case simply relocating playground equipment across Vassar to the east in the more natural area of Sleepy Hollow Park is not acceptable. 
We have lived in this area off and on since 1976, and this area has always been used as a green space by our children and now grandchildren, and other people of all ages. Playground equipment there does not fit into the character of this portion of the park. There are other locations available within walking distance of the Sleepy Hollow and McDonald Park neighborhoods for playground equipment, such as the lot at 3343 Country Club. Wesley has purchased this property and plans to tear down the house in the near future. It is not in the rezoned footprint for their adjacent rehabilitation hospital plan, a portion of the McDonald Park golf course bordering, bordering Murdoch and Vassar. In any event, an equivalent playground should be at Wesley's expense since the sale is purely for their benefit and to the detriment of the neighborhood. From Jennifer Robinson, uh, keep Sleepy Hollow Park, text to whom it may concern, I'm worried about the future of Sleepy Hollow Park. Word on the street is that Wesley's trying to buy the small parcel of land to create another parking lot. They've already brought up, they've already, excuse me, bought up houses in our area and are encroaching on our way of life. My young children enjoy meeting their friends at our little pirate ship park. It's become part of our routine. Riding bikes and scooters to the park encourages my children to adopt a healthy lifestyle and socialize with their friends. From my understanding, should Wesley purchase this land? They have said they'd fund another park. However, it is unclear where this park should be located. We need a park in our neighborhood, period. Please let it go on record that my family and I staunchly oppose all of Wesley's slow and rather silent takeover of both Sleepy Hollow and McDonald neighborhoods. I urge you to vote down Wesley's offer so we may keep our neighborhood park. From Bruce Repke, Sleepy Hollow Park, I strongly urge you to leave Sleepy Hollow Park alone. Small community parks are essential for the well-being of the community. From Ranfred Thiel, Dear City Council Representative Brandon Johnson in Wichita Parks and Rec, I heard today from a friend who lives close to the park that the city plans to sell the land where there's currently a playground just east of Wesley Hospital and south of the employee parking garage to the hospital. I am concerned that this would mean the end of the playground and a degrading of this area around the hospital. This playground is used by many visitors to the hospital who have children as well as employees on their break. The picnic tables are excellent for adults watching the kids and the trees there provide nice shade in the summer throughout the months of May through August. I take a daily walk through this park and it is a very enjoyable part of my walk, keeping track of the wildlife in the area as the park offers an entrance into the Sleepy Hollow Creek area. If the city is concerned with garbage or homeless people sleeping there, I can testify that out of the hundreds of times that I walk through there in the morning during the summer months, the times that anything bothers me there are at a minimum. The families who live nearby are not concerned about this. Thanks for listening to my concerns. From Amanda Spell, Subject, possible sale of portion of Sleepy Hollow Park. Text, dear Sleepy Hollow Park committee members, councilperson Brandon Johnson and Bill, I am writing to express my deep concern over the proposed sale of a portion of Sleepy Hollow Park to Wesley Medical Center as a neighbor perhaps most directly impacted by this decision. I strongly urge you to reconsider this proposal preserved our beloved playground for generations to come and use other options to remedy Wesley's parking issues. I own the house directly east across the street from the existing Wesley Hospital parking garage and Sleepy Hollow Park playground. I'm the mom of two young kids, ages four and six, we are well connected to all the older residents on our block, the numerous young families who live on the next block, along Sleepy Hollow Park and the many families around the entire Sleepy Hollow neighborhood. The number of young families with kids who visit this park and playground on a regular basis is only growing, and the charm of the park and playground is a huge draw to the area. My oldest child goes to College Hill Elementary, and we know a lot of families who live in the district who come to this park and playground, even if they don't live within walking distance, too. Children of parents who work at the hospital or families visiting patients at the hospital all benefit from having the park and playground for respite. I even heard of patients who enjoy looking out the hospital windows to see green and the happiness of children playing. This park and playground are a vital part of our city, and to sell or decrease its footprint would be detrimental. I was born in Wesley Hospital, grew up near Sleepy Hollow Park as a young child, and have many fond memories of walking under the Bassett Bridge to play at the playground, exploring the park's green spaces along the creek, sledding down the little hills, and even having my birthday parties in these spaces. Sharing that with my children is so special and we are not the only family with multiple generations and connections to Sleepy Hollow Park living in this area. This park has history and meaningful connections. It is integral to our community's identity. It is essential that we preserve this legacy and ensure that future generations can enjoy this space as we have and do now. I also want to address the suggestion to move the playground to the existing green spaces along the creek. Many neighbors, myself included, strongly oppose this idea. These green spaces are valuable and necessary for the community's use and taking them away for a playground would significantly impact our daily lives and property values. Furthermore, it is important to note that Sleepy Hollow Park is not trashy, unused, or appreciated, or even a problem with people experiencing homelessness as it may be portrayed by those trying to benefit from its sale. The neighbors genuinely love this space and take care of it, including cleaning up any trash that we find, which was never an issue until the park department couldn't fund the trash can that used to be there. Selling a portion of Sleepy Hollow Park to Wesley Medical Center is not the solution to any problems that may exist. Instead, I urge you to consider alternative solutions that do not involve selling off public parkland. Other options are 
available to both the Parks Department and Wesley, such as seeking out grants or fundraising efforts to support the upkeep and maintenance of the park and using existing land and spaces that Wesley owns to build vertical parking garages. The addition of more parking spaces is unnecessary and would only detract from the beauty and tranquility of the park, as well as create more safety issues. It would be detrimental to the surrounding community as it would increase traffic and noise levels in the area. My children are awoken by the noise from the parking garage every time it is clean during the night, as well as from certain employees who take off entirely too fast when leaving, and we'd like to keep that from happening even more frequently. If another garage was built adjacent to it, we walked to school every day and we had to stop walking down Vassar even though it's the most direct path since the traffic is already dangerous without having continuous safe sidewalks along this street. The areas where the Ronald McDonald House and apartments were torn down in North and or the land the hospital owns behind Panera and Wesley Inn could be a much more ideal location for a parking lot, any parking deemed necessary. And if the hospital is concerned about the old public garage being unsafe and having ICU visitors not close enough, they could change the employee parking garage to the public one or at least reserve enough spaces for visitors who may not be able to walk further. Wesley should have no excuses not to use their existing spaces more efficiently to meet their needs than to take away a playground from kids and then to question if a playground is even necessary. That really makes us angry and my kids are ready to protest position, do anything necessary to prevent this inconsiderate proposal. <clears throat> I appreciate the idea of Wesley funding a new playground if our voices are not heard and respected, but we do not believe it will be done in a way that truly makes up for this awful change. The playground should not be added to the other existing park area. A new playground would be very likely not would very likely not have mature trees as the existing one does. There are not a lot of other options to build a playground within walking distance for our neighbors and everyone who currently enjoys and benefits from these spaces. Perhaps the house on the southwest corner, a Vassar and Country Club that the hospital's purchased could be a playground, but we doubt Wesley is planning on using that space in that way. And if it has to happen, the only way that this would be to the only way to do this would be to build a new playground first before tearing down the existing one. This would hold everyone accountable for the sentiment of not taking away the playground, and as anyone who has children knows, they grow up fast. We don't want any time for the young kids in our city to not have this resource or to have to wait for it. Let's show our kids they matter and come before profit. We will be loud and bring people together to show our city that people and our community must come before parking or profits. I'm what you call a boomerang citizen. I grew up here and after living in NYC, I moved back to be near my family as I started my own. If you want to attract young people to the city, you have to listen to our needs and take these types of decisions seriously for the future of an attractive city. My elderly neighbors agree on not selling this land and I respect them, but you need to hear from the younger citizens before making decisions too. Please do not try to do this quickly and under the radar before hearing from everyone who will be impacted by this decision. In closing, I ask that you please listen to the concerns of your constituents and make the right decision to prefer preserve this precious community resources. Sleepy Hollow Park is a cherished space for families and community members alike, and its loss would be deeply felt by all. Thank you for your time. Sincerely, Amanda Spell. P.S. My kids, Phoebe and Ollie, wants me and will be writing their own letters, and they, while they won't be submitted by noon today, considering how quickly this is progressing and the fact you're holding the meeting at a time today, they are at school and many parents are at work. They also deserve to be heard. You're going to have to tell these young people who care about their playground existing the most if you really move forward with this. And I wouldn't blame them if they want to move away from a city that doesn't care about them as they get older. This has long-term impacts and shows your values. Please be considerate and set a good example. From Vanessa Schmidt, subject Sleepy Hollow Park sale, a text, hello. Please do not sell the Sleepy Hollow Park near Wesley Hospital. For a parking garage, this is an important part of our community and one of the few places kids in our neighborhood can walk to and feel safe nearby. Please keep this a part of our enjoyable space. Thank you. From Jessica Martinez, Sleepy Hollow Park, text to whom it may concern, please consider reconsider tearing down the Sleepy Hollow Park. This is a great area for the neighborhood to walk dogs and spend time outdoors. There are very few areas around that have open space. Wesley Hospital has taken over more and more of the neighborhood. That is never that than was ever supposed to happen, excuse me. Tearing down the park will take away from the culture and community of the neighborhood. Sincerely, Jessica Martinez. From Jennifer Robinson. Uh, to whom it may, uh, keep Sleepy Hollow Park, to whom it may concern. I am worried about the future of Sleepy Hollow Park. Word on the street. I may have read this one already. Let's make sure real quick. Thanks. It references the pirate ship park again, and that's the only one like that, so we'll just double check, yeah. Yeah, that too, though, so yeah, for sure. Okay, uh, just in the meantime, from Andrew Go, uh, Sleepy Hollow Park Playground was the MC. Text your park and rec board uh, of commissioners, having lived in the house directly across the street from the park in question. I have relevant experience in use of this park as a neighbor with children. I would have loved to see that park be moved into the boundaries of the neighborhood away from the traffic of Vassar if that were to be an option. I don't believe the park should sell green space and playground without there being a 
net gain to the community. The area of the Sleepy Hollow Park that began in my front yard, 3402 Sleepy Hollow Drive spills into, is largely unused and is simply green space, which is nice. Having a playground away from the traffic and commercial businesses makes me feel safer as a parent. We rarely use the playground early in our kids' lives. At first glance, I like the idea of trading the space and putting in an accessible park for all in the open area east of the Stone Bridge. Additionally, the sand parks are dated and unusable for people with disabilities, and it needed updated anyways. Perhaps the hospital would support donating funds to make a better and safer park all around, and a better space to the immediate east of the playground of Sleepy Hollow Park. It's such a fun setting for encouraging outdoor activities, speaking of the green space. Bottom line, if the private entity is asking for parking, they need to provide compensation of a greater perceived value for the space they are taking. They should be motivated to give the neighborhood a much better park than it currently has as a trade for parking lot spaces. Thank you for your consideration. From Elizabeth Dickerson, Sleepy Hollow Park. Text, to whom it may concern, selling and turning the Sleepy Hollow Park into a parking garage would be a disservice to our community for many of us. This is the park that we use on a daily basis to go with our children and enjoy the time outside. This park has been part of our community for generations and it would be a sad sight to see it disappear. Please ask, asking you to consider, please asking you to reconsider selling this park. Thank you. Uh, Amelia Hopper, Sleepy Hollow, text, I urge you to not sell the park to Wesley. I am an Andover resident, but work in Wichita, and my daughters have gone to that park, and I think having green space for kids is really important. From Becky Schmidt, Sleepy Hollow Park sale, text, please do not demolish the Sleepy Hollow Park playground and not make it a parking garage, thank you. From Jared Schmidt, subject possible sale of a portion of Sleepy Hollow Park, text as a playground, as a resident of the neighborhood, I urge the commission to reject a possible sale of a portion of Sleepy Hollow Park. That playground in Sleepy Hollow Park is a valuable resource and its removal will hurt the community. Thank you. From Brock Trafis, Trafis, excuse me. I'm Brock Trafis, resident of Sleepy Hollow at 3907 Edgemont. I'm writing to express extreme concern about the potential sale of Sleepy Hollow Park to the hospital. My family uses the park multiple times a week as it's the only public park within walking distance of our home and is an extremely well-used park and could use some upgrades and is beloved by our neighborhood. It is absolutely unacceptable for Wesley to propose another parking garage when the one immediately adjacent never appears to be at capacity nor even remotely full, Wesley should consider a parking garage for the vacant land that they already own in the area instead of tearing down a community hub. If they need more parking, they should provide a campus-wide study showing such and rearrange current assets to provide for that need. It's 2023. Tearing down public parks for carbon-intensive parking garages in the middle of a climate emergency is such backwards thinking I wouldn't expect from those who are supposed to protect our green spaces. Say no to the sale of the land. Say yes to a better improved Sleepy Hollow Park. From Helen Farrelly, uh, Sleepy Hollow Park text, paved paradise and put up a parking lot, really Wichita. You know there are better options, please be more responsible, thank you. From Nicole Gerbel, Wichita Sleepy Hollow Park uh, text, hey, I'm extremely sad to hear about the park possibly being torn down. I've lived in this neighborhood for years and I'm so thankful this park exists. I absolutely love taking my children there every day after school. I'd be absolutely heartbroken if it were torn down. Let me know if there's anything I can do to stop it. From Strider, uh, Wesley Park and Garage, parks are an invaluable resource in an increasingly urban area. If we cut off ties to nature, we will lose the ability to connect and decrease stress. If they're going to build a garage, the least they could do is be required to build it underground and make the park atop more walkable and enjoyable for current residents and future guests. I stress this from a mental health perspective. If we remove the ability to be outside and see nature with big structures that blot out our nature, mental health will suffer as a result. Jenny Mertz, subject, Sleepy Hollow Park, text, hello, my name is Jenny Mertz and I live on the dividing street between Country Overlook and Sleepy Hollow. I was just made aware that the city is considering selling a portion of Sleepy Hollow Park so that Wesley can expand parking. I would be so saddened to see uh, more of this part of the neighborhood taken up by Wesley. I know that growth is inevitable, but I also know that preserving our distinct neighborhood is important. I enjoy walking this park and urge you to leave it intact as it is. Thank you. Emily Koch, Sleepy Hollow Park, uh, text, good day, my name is Emily and I'm a local. In Wichita, it was brought to my attention that Sleepy Hollow Park is potentially going to be sold to Wesley Hospital, so they may turn it into additional parking. Having said that, I wish to share that I think it's an absolutely awful idea, and I'm firmly against it. That area is one of the few parks within walking distance in the neighborhood, and honestly, parking in the area isn't too terrible to destroy a facet of the neighborhood. Would not just drop property values, but take a vital necessity from parents. Summer is coming, and soon kids will need to be entertained, and the park is a big part of that. It would be a disservice to Wichita families to take the park away. Have you ever dealt with a four-year-old super hyped up and needing to burn off energy? Parks are a lifesaver for high-energy kids and their parents' sanity. Please be considerate of those who live in the area. We need green spaces and playgrounds for our children, not additional parking. Thank you for your time, and please consider the long-term effects on Wichita families. Have a lovely day. From Abby Sani, 
Uh, good morning. As a former Sleepy Hollow resident uh, and a mom of young children, I strongly oppose considering selling part of the Sleepy Hollow Park to Wesley for more parking. This would be a huge loss for this neighborhood and really speaks poorly of the Parks Department for even considering this. From Jenny Foster, subject Sleepy Hollow Park, text, hello, it, was just come, it has just come to my attention of many family, excuse me, it has just come to the attention of many families who live in Edgemont Street that the Sleepy Hollow Park is being considered to tear down for a parking garage. There are over 15 neighborhood kids on Edgemont Street and many others on other streets who walk to this park very often for playtime. This is the closest park without the kids having to cross a busy road. We'd be so sad to see this park go. From Richard Ruth, Sleepy Hollow Park, no. Text, hi, just an email to say no to losing parkland. An entire park in this case to parking lots or anything else. Cheers. Uh, Jeremy Tyrone, uh, excuse me, Jeremy Tryon, uh, selling of Sleepy Hollow Park. Hello, Wichita Parks Department. I'm very disappointed to hear that there is a consideration for selling a portion of Sleepy Hollow Park to the hospital for the purpose of increased parking space. Already a very unfortunate portion of Wichita's empty parking lots, and it would be a shame to see the portion increase. People will always prefer green spaces over asphalt. It is my hope that you will decide against selling part of this park. From Tori Price, subject Sleepy Hollow Park. Sale text, hello, my name is Tori Price. I have two children who have utilized the Sleepy Hollow Playground and love going there for play dates. It would be a huge detriment for the Sleepy Hollow community to lose this playground or any of the green space available. We feel like it is imperative that we protect free play and green spaces for our children. This is more integral to healthy playground, healthy neighborhoods and families than more parking for the hospital. There are options to add more vertical parking, but you can't add green space back onto a parking lot. Please prioritize, prioritize play and children over parking. Thank you. From Joshua Wolf, Sleepy Hollow Park. Uh, text, good afternoon, my name is Josh Wolf. I'm a Wichita and public school teacher. I recently was made aware of a plan to sell a portion of Sleepy Hollow Park to Wesley Hospital to convert to a parking garage. I'm writing to suggest against this action. Parks are essential to quality of life, citizen health, happiness, and much more parking lots at a place for people to store their two-ton living rooms on wheels, and we already have more than enough of them surrounding Wesley. Parking is in no short supply, and any business saying that we need more parking more than likely just needs better signage for the parking they already have. I've been to Wesley many times and never had trouble finding a place to park, but sometimes it is confusing to figure out where the parking is. Don't take away city recreation space to support the building of a blight on the community that we already have more than enough of. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Nate. Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Nate. Uh, very much for, uh, and Penny as well. So uh, thank you very much again for, for reading all those through. Uh, so I will go ahead and kick it over to our speakers who've come. And again, if you've uh, decided that other folks who have shared their emails have said your thoughts, you can feel free to say no thanks, or you can by all means come up and share, but uh, we will try to limit it to three minutes. Uh, so please, uh, Barack, if you are here, Barack, would you like to come speak and state your name? And if you'd like to state your address, you can. Uh, yeah, I'm Brock Trappis, resident of Sleepy Hollow at 3907 Edgemont. Uh, my email was already read, but I wanted to make sure to come and put a face to the name and just in case if I wasn't able to make it here, which is why I sent the email. Um, but obviously here in response, uh, it's really unacceptable to consider selling our neighborhood's beloved public space to be turned into what is rumored to be private parking. The park is not only well used by our neighborhood, but also by families at Wesley looking for just even a little bit of refuge. Um, my family uses this park multiple times a week as it's really the only one within easy walking distance of our home. If anything, this park deserves a major upgrade um, given how well loved it is. From my perspective, the garage direct directly to the north never seems at capacity, let alone half full. Before HCA is allowed to spread their fingers even further into our neighborhood, they need to look inward and learn to manage the assets they already own. What are they doing to allocate parking across their multiple lots and garages they already own? What are they doing with the vacant lots along Central between Rutan and Vassar, where they tore down working class housing in the late 2010s? What about the already existing parking lot on Edgemont, south of the park, that they have every right to develop? They do not have a right to our public land. Um, again, I really can't believe it. it has to be advocated to the board that's entrusted with our public parks but swapping green space for carbon intensive vehicular infrastructure in the middle of a climate crisis is really about as backwards as you could be. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Representative, I see that you're wanting to speak on another issue, so I'll, you're next in line, but I'll get to you when we talk about the next issue. So, uh, Dan and Margaret Anderson.
apologize to the member of the board that I spoke up, but it wasn't my turn. <laughs> that was rude. It's sort of the curse of my life, but I'm working with it. <laughs> <laughs> Dan and Margaret Anderson, uh, we're on Sleepy Hollow uh, residents. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to point out in the planning of this that are factually incorrect. Uh, it was mentioned that it, there's a drainage system that runs through there. That is actually a federally recognized live stream. There's actually fishing up, the kids fish just upstream from that point. Uh huh, still do. Uh, so there's going to be a planning and financial impact to whatever you do with that property because of that federal uh, designation with the Department of Interior. And to add to that, if there's any kind of blogging off or redirecting it, there's a problem because that does run actively through Wesley. I worked there. If you go on a rainstorm and go into the gamma knife door, look down, rushing water. So nothing's been capped off, and if they interrupt that, we could be flooded every time. Sometimes we get six days of rain over there. One of the thing, uh, other things I want to point out is it, this park is not divided physically from the rest of the park. There's a bridge right here, this stream, and there is a public access to both sides of that stream bed developed to walk under that bridge between the sections of the park. So it's not physically divided by the street. Uh, one of our other major concerns is a question of need. What is the usage need from the point of view of Wesley, other than it's an open space that nobody needs. Uh, one of the questions that ties into that, uh, are we aware that uh, of potential cons uh, concerns and employment, I'm sorry, patient census and employment has dropped at Wesley, is a piece of information I have. Unconfirmed. Uh, so if that population they want to park there is reducing, why do they need to park it? Number two, what are the properties that are, are buying out around Wesley? Yeah. This is a continuation of a, uh, a long-term question we've had with our neighbor and it would be nice to have some answers. Uh, just, I'm just saying we're at our three minutes. Did you have much more that you'd like to say? There's only one thing I would like to say sure. is our number one resource anywhere in the world is our children. Our children are gonna be drastically affected if they take that resource away in any way. And those trees are over like a, nearly 100 years old. You can't replace them. Once they're gone, it also affects the ecosystem. The kids get over there and they laugh and smile at all the birds in the trees in season and they try to name them and they have games and it would just be really sad because our children should be number one. Thank you. Okay, Ed Ball. Do you mind coming to the microphone just because we want to be able to make sure people well, watching along? Oh, okay, shoot. All right. I didn't know I was on the list. <laughs> <laughs> I wish my wife was here. Um, my, my real question is, in the very beginning, is why? What's the big deal about wanting to sell, or rather buy, the property? Is the city in so much financial trouble that they want to sell the property? I just was walking by the information booth there a minute ago, and the park board has had to come up with a, a, some, a large amount of $1,000 for homeless people. Maybe that's 
what the money's going to go for. I don't know. Um, but uh, I'm at uh, the stage of my grand, my children, my great grandchildren, great great grandchildren, living in the area and using our park across the street. Uh, it would just really tear us up if we lost lost the park. They're saying that well, they're going to put the garage down there, parking, and then they're going to move the park uh, playground up this way. That doesn't make sense at all. Uh, anyway, let's uh, try and think of other th people that come behind us. Thank you. Okay, Amanda Spell. I'm Amanda Spell. I'm a resident at 3402 Sleepy Hollow Drive. So I'm the house that's like right there. I can look out to the parking garage that exists there. Um, you already heard my novel, Nate. Sorry, you had to read through that. Um, one of my first questions is, how can we make our neighborhood more aware of this? Because like a lot of people said, we just found out. Were you like I rambled in that email because it was just train of thought, trying to get it all out. If we had more time to prepare, we can more effectively voice our opinions. Um, I have another mom in the neighborhood, but we have so many families. They keep growing in the area, and we all would like to have a voice and say in this, but not everyone's aware of it. So I would just like to ask that. How do we get involved besides just watching the park board agenda? Um, I think it mainly goes to if Wesley's wanting to buy in that and they want us to be good neighbors, it needs to go both ways. Um, clearly, they don't have a great reputation of fulfilling their promises with us, which I'm all for improvement. I am nostalgic because I grew up, I was born in Wesley, I lived on Country Club when I was little, I was the one that had my birthday parties in that park, and now I have a family there. So it's just full circle. I want to see that continue for generations. But I also don't want to stand in the way of improvement. If we can get a lot of money and make a great new park, by all means, that's awesome. I just don't have faith that Wesley's going to hold up their end and not just keep going further. And to condense it, to put playground equipment in a green space, we need playground and green space separate. Um, and our kids are growing up fast. We don't even want to wait two weeks for a playground to be closed. When it was closed to put the mulch there, my kids were waiting to go back there. Um, if it took a time where it was going to be building a new park, even in our area, these are precious times. Like We don't want to wait a month, a year. I, I would like to propose that they would need to build the new playground in a new spot, not condense it into a smaller one, and do it before they tear the old one down. Um, I prefer not to because, yeah, that parking garage wakes up my kids. Um, and it's interesting because Andy, one of my, he, I actually alerted him to that, and he was the one person that wasn't completely opposed like the majority of everyone else. He lived in the house before me and had young kids. Back when it was Sandy, back then there were maybe not as many kids in that time period of the history of our park, um, so it didn't feel as safe. But I feel like if we had a parking garage there, it's going to become less safe because those cars whip around Vassar so fast, I don't feel safe with my kids going there. So having that bridge to go under is the only way that that feels safe to us. If you had another parking garage there, that's going to be a lot more traffic. Um, and there's no sidewalk there. So we want to keep these little ones, like my friend's kids, safe when they're coming to this playground. Um, yes, those are my questions, my opinions, and that's it. <laughs> Thank you. OK, Nicole Rogers. I just want to say, first of all, I'm terrible at public speaking, so <laughs> I really wouldn't come up here unless it was something that meant a lot to me. Um, I mean, I take my kids to this park literally every single day. Like, anytime I feel stressed, depressed, overwhelmed, I take my kids there, and they just enjoy the heck out of it. <laughs> I mean, they'll be playing there for literally hours. And I'm just so appreciative of this park, and to hear about it being torn down for like a parking lot really, really makes me upset. Like, yeah, <laughs> it makes me extremely upset. This is like my one place that I can take them, and they're happy, and all that. So that's all I have to say. <laughs> I'm just sad. Thank you very much. Okay. I. There's somebody on Sleepy Hollow whose name I cannot read and I cannot tell whether or not they wanted to speak. 
Uh, so if there's somebody on Sleepy Hollow who would like to speak, and I don't say your name, please say I missed you or skipped you. Yes? Uh, I see, yeah, you are next, actually, so please, you're, you, are ne you are next. Oh, it's my hand Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Okay, that's okay. You speak, people will raise their Very good. Terry, would you like to speak? Yeah, thank, you. thank you for joining us, and thank you. I'll make it short and sweet, too. I'm going to admit to you, first of all, that I can tell by your body language that you're probably over this. <laughs> and so I, I want to recognize that. Um, but I also want to recognize that until this happens to you in your neighborhood, it's easy to say, I just don't know what they're getting all upset about. But, and I don't know how many of you have ever been in Sleepy Hollow. I've only been there four and a half years. I walk my dog. I walk all hours of the day and night through that area and I feel very safe. Um, I would like to invite every one of you just to take a drive through that area. It's a very, very quaint gem of a neighborhood. You will not see that kind of green space in other parts of the city. I've lived in Wichita on and off, and I've been east, west, south, um, different parts of the city. I've never seen anything like this Sleepy Hollow area. It's, it's beautiful. Um, the other thing I would like you to consider, too, is when everyone says we have to be um, neighbors and we should work together, which is what we do not do a lot of anymore, shame on us. Um, it does appear that people have been more than giving to sleep or to Wesley Hospital lately. If that is who is after this property, they have knocked down homes lately. They, they're after a beautiful two-story gray house. I'm going to cry when they take it down in the next few weeks. They were the last holdouts <laughs> at the corner of Vassar and Country Club, I think, or Country. Um, and they just were exhausted from what I hear. They just couldn't put up the fight any longer. Um, I would invite you to drive through that neighborhood to see how quaint it is, to see what a gem it is for Wichita. Um, I appreciate the time that you give me to speak. Thank you very much. Can I, hey, can I say one thing? Sure. Uh, Terry, I want to apologize if uh, we, we give off the impression that we don't care anymore. We, we certainly do not. We are all neighbors here. We're all Wichitans. And, uh, that is certainly not the case. And, and I think I speak on behalf of the entire board. So. And I would add, I, I live on Clapp, like right on Clapp. So when it closed the golf course and we had to change as a community and, and the uncertainty of what was going to be, happen to that, you know, was a big thing. So my response to it was, I will on the park board. I want to help make a difference, right? So I encourage everyone the same thing, right? So if you, when the time comes and an open com comes up, this is your opportunity to do that. Yes. Yeah, we got a, a, a couple of more. If we'd like to proceed on that, did you were you looking to speak as well? I'm sorry. No, no. I was I, there was I'd Ray. Like, I'd like to be last. Okay. Okay. <laughs> sure. Uh, Ray, if you'd like to speak, I, uh, I d you can put a question mark, but I just want to say Ray Maltby. Uh, oh, it was K. K. Excuse me, K. Jerry said everything I needed to say. Uh, all right. Okay. Uh, Lisa Geist. Hello, I'm Lisa Geist. I live on Edgemont Street, just a couple little blocks over there. Um, and uh, there's, I just learned about this a few hours just after uh, noon. I was told that about the noon deadline for sending the emails and it's, I'm glad to see I'm not the only one that was very confused. Um, I also was a little bit um, naive because I always assumed that that cute little park by the hospital was owned by the hospital and I thought oh how nice that a large um, corporation understands the importance of having a nice little park uh, right there and I realize the naivete of <laughs> thinking that um, I was wrong in multiple ways but that doesn't matter because the park isn't theirs the park is ours um, I'm gonna skip the next part that I hastily wrote uh, about you know the kids the benefits of the kids watching my neighbor's kids grow up and, and you know, run around safe and walk down to the park and the hope too in the future when I have my own kids for them to be able to do the same. Uh, so I'm gonna skip that part because everybody covered it really well. Um, 
I understand that this is a, pr a privilege, having this park right there. Most kids don't have a park within a safe walking distance. I wish every kid had parks in their neighborhood with good equipment to play on. I understand the difference between rights and privileges. Um, and, and, and this park is a real privilege on this block, and it is one that we have the right to hold on to. Uh, with so many studies out there showing the benefits of parks as far as the physical and mental health of the community, it is shockingly counter counterintuitive for our community, community to sell a park to the, to the hospital, and then for the hospital to destroy it to build a parking garage. This is a no-brainer. Let's pick the option that's right for the community. Um, we talked a little bit about maybe consolidating the park. Consolidating parks isn't the answer in general. If we start doing that, we're going to keep doing that, and then Wichita is going to end up being a city with three large parks, and that's it. Um, also, a couple neighbors kind of pointed this out. Moving that equipment across the street, it doesn't really super work. And when you looked at the, the map of the whole park, this is like, you know, a little piece. It's just a quarter of the park. It's actually a very important quarter of the park. Half the park is essentially the creek with uh, grassy tree areas on either side. Great for walking dogs. Um, great for walking kids, maybe, I suppose, if that's what you do with them. Um, then at the end, there's, yeah. um, and then at the end, across from this street, there's that maybe the kind of a little bigger actual park, park type area that I think that they're imagining putting the equipment to. Well, right now, that's kind of, a, a lot of people walk their dogs there. It's really kind of a small area. There's a lot of dog walking, a lot of people running around, awesome. Um, but then to put the playground, and but so right now, then if you keep continuing going under the bridge, then that's there, that's where the kids are. Okay. You're at your three minutes. Do you have anything else okay. you'd like to add? Um, actually, uh, one last thing. Sure. Um, as someone uh, who you know, I um, I'm a business person, and I've learned something about business is it never hurts to ask. Some of those sometimes there's a long shot. And if they say no, it's not going to hurt you. It never hurts to ask. And that's what this business is doing. They saw this. They thought, let's ask. Let's see what happens. But, you know, here's the neighborhood. Here's the Parks and Rec um, uh, people. Like, this, this is a no-brainer. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Josh? Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Josh Siebenaller. I am the acting president of the McDonald Neighborhood Association, so just north of Sleepy Hollow here. I also represent McDonald on the District 1 Advisory Board. Um, I want to start by validating a concern that a lot of my neighbors have brought up, which is about the notification process. Uh, I have lifted my concerns both in a personal capacity as well as at the District Advisory Board that it is insufficient, and I when y'all send your notes along to the city council, I hope that this is another avenue through which our voices are heard that we need to be involved in a more timely manner. Um, so onto the matter at hand here, there's very little that I can add beyond the voices that have raised both in person as well as over email, but I do want to bring to y'all the perspective that I have in having recently dealt with Wesley in a similar capacity. So a few folks have mentioned the physical rehab center that is being built along Country Club between Vassar and Holyoke. My home is directly across the street from that proposed center. Um, throughout the rezoning process, Wesley and their representatives were dodgy, condescending, and demeaning to the community when we raised our voices and expressed our concerns about this large, uh, between I believe 42 and 82 bed facility that they wanted to park in the middle of our neighborhood and they refused to meet with the McDonald community until the District 1 Advisory Board essentially forced them to. Um, all of this brings me to my appeal, for, especially for the city, but for Wesley, if they happen to be tuning in, um, is to find a plan B and find a plan C, because plan, B, plan A is not going through. We've made our voices heard universally opposed to it. The Wesley, as an organization, has stomped over the neighboring community, and honestly, we're pretty tired of trying to force them to be good neighbors. Uh, it's, there's a paper trail going back decades of broken promises and lost lawsuits, lost by Wesley, I'll add, um, that demonstrate the contempt that they have for the surrounding community. And so we want, you know, we all want Wesley to succeed as an institution. 
The, many of our neighbors work at Wesley, and we recognize that they're a major employer in the city, but this is not the way to do so. And so my ask for the board here is to nip this sale in the bud, uh, and let's not let Leslie literally and figuratively bulldoze this pocket park. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dan Heflin, it's 714 North Yale. I am the uh, current and after the past 15 years been the Neighborhood Association President for Sleepy Hollow. Um, I was the idiot that said, hey, if nobody else is going to do it, I guess I'll do it. And I've been doing it <laughs> continuously. Um, when I took it over for Kim, Kim was moving to Kansas City and she said, watch out for Wesley. They're going to try to take that park because that's the reason our neighborhood association was formed in order to buy out. You talk about, they come in after, what they, well, if we give them this, what are they gonna do in a few years, right? This is the compromise from 30 years ago. This is what they said, hey, okay, we'll take the parking garage, but we'll give you this park. So that's, that hasn't been discussed. We need to know that this is our compromise. Now they want the compromise. And we knew that they were gonna come after, after us why we kept the Neighborhood Association not necessarily active, but attentive. I'm so proud of my neighbors. The all emails that you've heard, the people that have come back and, up and, and spoken. The meeting we had yesterday, we put together in less than five hours on a Sunday afternoon, and I had to leave to go do some work, get something done, and I just lived, kept it to a couple of neighbors, and they did it. They took care of this because this neighborhood loves each other. We live up to our name, Sleepy, but don't aggravate us. <laughs> we, you, know, it's, it's, you could go put a tent in the middle of the street in the middle of the night and not have to worry about getting run over. It's that sleepy. But we love this little neighborhood. This little park being over where it's at is actually perfect. And as we were in our meeting yesterday, we were discussing amongst ourselves, you know, what's our next step? What are we going to do? A resident came out of the hospital with his little daughter, with a little, had a little break, and residents don't get much time to enjoy their families. And she was, he was able to come over with his wife and have time in the park with his little girl. This is important to the hospital. They just don't know it. And it's very important to us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, um, well, go ahead and bring discussion back to the board after all of that input. Uh, again, I want to say thank you very much to everybody who came and wrote emails. Uh, this, is, this is the step we want. This feedback is really very helpful. It paints the conversation uh, very much. So I just wanted to open up to fellow board members to share our thoughts here. Are we going to take a vote at the end of this to give to council? Is that what the, the ending result of this is? You can if you would like to. Yes, I would like to. Yep. Further discussion? Troy, just so I understand the process, because an official offer, or has an official offer been made or is it just an inquiry? Inquiry. Okay. Because an inquiry has been made, we do we have to, op we have to open up an RFP. Is this correct? It's common practice that we do. Okay. Yeah. But we can recommend to the, to the council not that we oppose or favor. That's correct. Said RFP. That is correct. Is the that, RFP that, live now? When does it end? No. Okay. That, that's why we're meeting now. Yep. And so I, I understand some of the concerns in regards to notification and getting information out. There's still a lot of process going on. So you know, today is not the decision. Uh, these folks don't make the decision, by the way. It's council. Second is there's this opportunity for discussion, and that's why we're meeting, is to get input from the board but also from the board to get input from the community mm -hmm. so that's why we're here today but if you would like to uh, provide a vote today uh, and, and send that message back to council we can definitely do that I, I believe that we should you know uh, Phil I, I wanted to ask you what your motion was because my thought was I mean at the very least I, I, the recommendation I would make is that Wesley in addition needs to approach 
the neighborhood association possibly approach the DAB and have a conversation? Because I think that what I heard today is there's just been a lack of openness to that kind of conversation. I think we could probably avoid a lot of the frustration if we can have an open discussion about what their needs are. See what the you know if we that was a that was a point we heard last night was the need to hear what their needs analysis is. Maybe there's some overwhelming need for this. We just don't know, but it doesn't seem very clear. And what are the alternatives that they've considered and, and, and passed on? So I think no matter what, that'd be my recommendation on that. Please. Okay. Can I speak again? You may, Terry. I, that, that language bothers me. Because what I hear from this group here is that we get calls from the neighborhood and they We're trying to be proactive. We're trying to do this way, way before it ever gets to a point where they can just run with the ball and take it, and we're all caught off guard. We work. We have kids. We yeah. can't always show up at the afternoon to yeah. tell people that we don't want this. Please um, keep that in mind. What you heard also, please keep in mind, is that a lot of these people have dealt with West in the past. They've made promises. That makes us so leery. And I think that's why we had a big voice, mm -hmm. because people are like, we, we have to get this now. Yeah. We have to get a hold of this now. That's true. And I think this is a small yeah. of the people that have been being Clearly, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> I, I, I believe it. So, I mean, I would, um, well, before we even, please. I think there's still some more comments. Oh, please one, go one ahead. Question. Maybe for Troy, I don't see Jess here, but is there surplus land at the golf course? Is there space that, is not used or is, I mean, we're talking about the edges of it or what? So, I, I, so I heard a few comments as well. Hold on, so folks, let's, let's, one, one, one second. Yeah. Well, can you tell us a little bit about that land on the south side of McDonald? Yeah, I was getting ready to. Okay. So, so I heard a lot of comments in regards to moving the playground right across the street, and I, I don't think that was the intention. Um, there is something that we want to ask for, and I think we, we're asking for more than what um, they might want to or what's expected. Now, there's all kinds of options, and there's all kinds of different ideas, uh, whether it's somewhere in that creek area or whether there's something that's nearby that is also parkland, or maybe they provide some other parkland. Those are all options. Um, to answer your question, yes, there is a little bit of space over at uh, McDonald golf course that we could use to develop into more park space um, that would be uh, available to the neighborhood. Now, whether I think that's the best site or not, it's up for debate. There's a lot of different options that we can look at. Um, and, and those are things that go through the negotiation process if it goes down that direction, even if it goes down that far. So, um, but that doesn't take away from somebody who's playing golf there. That, that's Maybe correct. Something else. That's correct. I would, I would disagree with that. If, if I think, and my computer just died and did something here, but um, if I'm thinking of the, the land that we're talking about uh, to the kind of southwest of McDonald, that is used for a makeshift like warm up area uh, for some of the golfers. I know, you know, it is what it is, but to me, yeah. Is that the yeah, area? Yeah, that's there? correct. Okay. And, and Murdoch and Yale. It's, it's kind of on the edge of the, you're not in danger. Um, but <laughs> she's but to, to your point, I don't, I don't like moving the... <laughs> Fair enough. Depends on who's playing, I guess. I'm not saying that's the best answer or the best option. Is it an option? It could be. Um, you're talking about the, the mini pitch and putt that we have that is uh, a great opportunity for golfers to learn how to play, but also it's not necessarily our most popular portion of that golf course. And especially since we put in the driving range on the other side, uh, that has been used quite a bit for that as well. So, um, can it happen? Yes. Uh, with, without uh, impacting the rest of the golf course, yes, it can happen. Um, would it take a lot of effort and some changes? Yes. So, you asked if it's an option. Well, the, it is an option. Is it the best option? That's yet to be determined. Troy, in my opinion, uh, I've heard more than enough today uh, mm -hmm. to solidify how I feel about it. I haven't heard anything from Wesley or 
seen any of their master plans, but I've been over on their campus in a construction capacity. If it is truly about parking, they have other opportunities on that campus. Um, and you know, I've, I've heard everybody today and um, certainly the emails and, and nobody from Wesley is, is here. So today, um, you know, if there is a vote, I'm not confident to vote to sell this land. So that would be, that's, that's not my district. I'll, I'll leave it up to Alejo to make that motion, but, but that's where I'm at. Yeah, I would agree with Eddie. Um, I guess, is would it be appropriate to make a motion that the council would not even consider an RFP for this? I mean, <laughs> no, but I guess is that maybe the, that's the, what's the appropriate legal, I mean, because I, I mean, I, I agree with what, what Eddie said that, you know, overwhelm, there's not overwhelming support for mm -hmm. this proposal and um, he's the construction expert. Now, if we've got, if there's other room available for them <laughs> to purge, to build, then, you know, why sure. not? They have what, a public what? affairs officer. Why is that public affairs officer not here? Absolutely. Because yeah. that's important. Why is that public affairs officer not here? Yeah, so, but I guess, Nate, what is the appropriate phrasing that we need to, and then we'll, we'll, yeah. yes. Yeah, as Troy was discussing before, there's not, a whole lot of formal action that's been taken by the city yet, right. both in terms of the request for proposal, let alone the whole right. decision after that. That means there's, the language can probably be a bit more vague okay. about kind of what we think the proposal might or could be based on the information that we've gotten mm -hmm. and a recommendation of what council should or should not do based on that information. Okay. I think it would be hard to tie to a specific, for example, request for proposal or contract because we don't have one yet. Right. We, we so, can just say we're against the proposal of, of this portion of, or this sale. And I think maybe just kind of describing how we understand it here and then opposition yeah. or support okay. for that. Yeah. So a motion yeah. should be to oppose it or to oppose it and that we not even consider the, not not no, consider the sale? Want, you want six no votes or you want six? I want yes, six please. favors of not selling the thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you could oppose the potential sale. Oh, of please, please, go ahead. Um, one thing that, again, this is like all not verified information because Wesley is not here, but I have heard from employees that the existing public parking lot, the garage is structurally unsafe. So from what I've heard is they're taking out the public garage and want to like build it closer to the ICU. Um, so that's something that they might come back and argue that, that this is one of the causes for. I'm not saying that's like a legitimate reason. I still think there's other ways. But two, I would say that with the support of the neighborhood, if we want to make park improvements or use other spaces, we can do the existing one. I think you have enough support and enough people that we would rally around and help raise funds without Wesley having to buy it. Um, I've written grants for a school recently. There are other avenues to go, and we're here to support it. So let us know how we can help. Let's have a discussion. <laughs> tr tr truly, having a discussion about neighbors getting involved, like, and, and I can tell you, there's examples of other neighborhoods, like College Hill, recently with the with mm -hmm. the, the basketball court. So this is definitely has precedent. Let, so the the Park Foundation would be a great vehicle mm -hmm. for that, and Alejo would be your best contact. Mm -hmm. So that's really fantastic. Yeah. Thank you for offering that, and that's really exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's talk about how we can make a win out of this, no matter what. So, so do we have, do we have any other points of discussion or any clarification that we'd like to have? So, okay, so seeing none, I'll, I'll pass it over to Alejo as this does. Yeah. Me. So what, I guess, Nate, I want to make sure we get this motion yeah. correct. So the, would, it, would it make sense to say, um, you know, from the information presented to us today, uh, our recommendation at the park board is that we do not consider the sale of Sleepy Hollow Park and the portion between uh, what's the street? Rut, Rut, Rutten and Vassar? Yeah. Routine. Well, I think maybe Routine. backing up slightly. Okay. Um, so because there's nothing to concrete today, um, I, I do say that because anything, any other steps would kind of come back to park board too. Sure. Um, so I think kind of the idea here might be to do we have support or opposition for the proposal made today? Okay. Maybe would be the easiest way to conceptualize it. It leaves room for reconsideration or new information okay. potentially, but it seems to maybe express so it would be what's going the on. The motion here today. would be then the board votes to oppose the proposal made today. Stand and oppose. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think that yeah. In 
you know, it relies on what happened here, but that's why we have minutes and all of that. Okay. And I think that provides okay. a description. Does that work for you all? The yep. board, as a, my motion would be that we vote to oppose uh, the proposal that was presented to us uh, at the May Park Board meeting. So moved, and I will second that. Uh, we have a motion and a second on the table. All those in favor, please vote aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. Thank you very much. Troy and Nate, just for clarification as well, if when is when would the city council see this? And then um, at the end of the day, it's it's out of our hands, right? If, if there's a decision to move forward with an RFP, when would the community see an RFP for this? Well, first of all, I'm going to be sharing this information back to. Um, city manager mm -hmm. and, and let him know about the situation that occurred tonight or this afternoon and i think that's very important that he knows about it as well as wesley and, and as, as well as the council the council needs to know that as well <clears throat> so if we uh i think we we're thinking about putting the rfp out in about a week or two usually it's about 30 days mm -hmm. uh, then after that it's about another uh 30 days to evaluate and have some discussion. Um, then it would go to council, and then then be voted upon. So we're talking probably about a three to four month process. Okay. Um, and there definitely is some opportunities and stopping points to have more discussion. Um, so uh, not only would it be important for the community to talk to the park board, which has made their recommendation, mm -hmm. but also for the public to talk to their council members as well. Okay. okay. Uh, yes, Ed. Do you have the number of emails that you got? 38. 38. 38. 38. We got 38, 38 emails. emails. Yes. Sir. That's all. We don't work. He's a very. There's not that many people in Sleepy Hollow. Not at all. Right. He's a, he's a very fast reader, but you can always continue to, to mm -hmm. provide your opinions, um, whether it's at, at the DAB or back giving more opinions back to the uh, Board of Park Commissioners. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of opportunities to keep, continue sharing your messages. All right. Well, folks, I really appreciate it. I know the rest of the board, can, yeah. I'm speaking for them, I know they appreciated you coming today. It, was really, it really does matter when folks show up, and you can see it now. So thank you on behalf of the board. Thank you very much for being here today. So listen, if you like that, there's a lot more where that came from. We've got, uh, we're going to be talking about tree policy here pretty shortly. we got some great news from golf. If you want to, if you'd like to, you can stay and hear all of this good stuff. But I wanted to ask the board, or do you guys want to take five just to kind of, if you need to, or do you want to keep powering through? And I wanted to say if you guys wanted to take off, I understand. But I just want to check in with the board. How are we you feeling? I'm feeling fine. Keep rolling? Yeah, roll. Keep rolling? Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and roll into, thank you again, folks, very much for being here. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Do we need to move yeah. for a little minute? Yeah, so we do. No, hey, folks, thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Um, thank you all very much. we got to keep rolling. If we can take conversation. I love you all for being here. Thank you very much. we got to <laughs> got to keep decorum. We got to keep it rolling. Yeah. Yes. He just said he loved them all. Yes. They're great. <laughs> Thank you. I love them all. Is that on record? Yeah. Is that it should, on record? It should be. Yeah, I'll just give a little. Yeah, that's cool. Well, anyway, <laughs> something. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you all. Keep it rolling. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Let's go ahead then and get to the next item on the business. Item one. Item number one. Uh, we're going to have the approval of minutes. Has everybody had a chance to uh, review the minutes from April 10th, 2023, July 12th, 2021, and August 9th, 2021? Yeah. 
Do we, have any, do we have any questions about these? No? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to, or actually I will just make the motion uh, to approve the recommended action to uh, approve, sign, and file these minutes. Second. Thank you so much for the second by uh, Commissioner Cabral. Uh, motion being made and seconded. All those in favor, please vote aye. Um, aye. All those opposed, same sign. The ayes appear to have it and do have it. Okay, moving forward to prior business, we're on to item 3A. That is the public tree policy. Linda is our speaker, I think. Oh, no, Linda's on Teams, okay. Yep, Linda is on Teams, and let me give a, a, a little introduction. So Linda works for the uh, Hi, yes. project management <laughs> team, and she was uh, designated to take this next project. Uh, as you guys know, we've been working on this for a while with some new information coming on to light in regards to um, the NASA report that really kind of shows heat island situations throughout the city, uh, looking at other internal policies that we work with with uh, Public Works as well as with our Parks and Recreation Department Forestry section. Um, they've kind of regrouped and have developed another subcommittee to move this a little bit further and to actually have a, a more robust and more accurate policy for us as an operational policy in regards to trees. So Linda's been working with that team and she's got a very quick update um, and there, there is some progress and there's a lot of things that are moving parts on this and but we do think that there's going to be uh, getting to the finish line uh, within a few months or so. So I'll pass it on to Linda and go ahead and pre pre provide your presentation. Thank you, Troy. Linda? Okay, thank you so much. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, can we turn it? Can we uh, speak a little louder and ask that whoever's the tech in the room at the moment could turn it up, please? Okay, if I speak, if I speak a little louder like this, is it that's better? That's great. That's, that sounds, everybody okay? Mm -hmm. Great, thank you very much, Linda. You're, you're good. Okay, thanks. Uh, you're you're coming into me a little bit staticky, so I apologize if I misunderstand something that you say. No um, problem. So, uh, like Troy was saying, this is an update on our uh, tree policy project. And um, so recently, our sustainability team um, they got together with the NASA Langley Research Team. Uh, and they put together a, a Wichita Environmental Justice and Climate Change Report. Um, and this report looks at um, the areas of Wichita that have um, extreme heat. You know, it looks like the average heat that uh, throughout Wichita uh, during the day and during the evening. Um, and I'll show you if we click on this link real quick. Um, here's the report, and we can send this link out, of course, to anybody who would like it. Um, it goes, you know, the report is very, it's very easy to read. It talks about, um, I'm trying to page down here. Uh, it talks about, uh, you know, where the heat is in the city, um, lots of maps, a lot of interesting ideas. Um, so I'll let you look at that in your own time. Um, but that is the report that has spurred us on to look at our policy um, and include this environmental justice lens, if you will. Um, that report looks at the relationship between heat and our tree canopy, um, how it intersects with environmental justice. Um, it was shown that the tree canopy is a major mitigate, mitigation strategy um, for you know, improving the the heat you know the heat areas in the city. So uh, the manager has the city manager has brought in um, the project management team of which I'm a member, um, and we're taking a look at the policy as it stands, and and we're working with all of the experts from um, engineering and our forestry <laughs> team, uh, and of course park and recreation as a whole. Um, we want to uh, look at that process and improve it based on the findings that were in this report that came out. Um, and here it shows, um, you, you see the items in red on this screen right here? These are 17 um, census tracts that they identified as 
uh, being very high risk um, for, you know, increased um, extreme heat. Um, these are places where the heat uh, negatively impacts the community more than other areas. Um, you know, it's not an even impact. Um, and these uh, red, these areas that you see here were affected the most. So what we're doing right now is having weekly working sessions with all of those experts um, as we go through, you know, each part of our policy and, and take a look at it, see what we need to amend, um, what we can do. But then we're going to put all those recommendations together and take that to our executive leadership. They'll take a look at it and, uh, and we'll work through that process. And then, of course, we'll be engaging uh, the stakeholders also in that in that process after it's been approved by our executive team. Uh, so that's pretty much where we're at. I don't really have anything else to show you on it. Um, I will say that our teams have made uh, really a lot of progress. Um, we're working through it pretty quickly, so um, hoping we have uh, something to to give them for approval here in the next, I don't know how long, but it'll be, you know, weeks rather than months. Great. Thank you very much, Linda. Uh, do we have any questions for staff on this? I'd just like to have that link to see that report. Uh, so is this in our, uh, the agenda for today? Can we get this mixer? We want to take a look at this report. Uh, can you just email that to us if we've not received it yet? Uh, sure. Um, I don't know. Do we have minutes? Do we have minutes to come out of the meeting that we could add it to? Do you know? Yes. Anything? I mean, it, it could be on the minutes, but we just want to make sure that we get a copy because I haven't had a chance to review the link, and that seems like a really interesting report. So I, I know that I just googled Wichita Environmental Justice and Climate Change Report, and it comes up. Okay. It's a NASA website. Na so. NASA Environmental Justice and Climate mm -hmm. Change yep, Report. Yeah, Wichita Environmental Justice and Climate Change Report. Okay. You better be careful googling NASA. <laughs> <laughs> Um, any questions? Yeah, and that goes into all the... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Linda. No, I was just going to say the report goes into all of the particulars, you know, everything that they looked at, um, that everything that affects those marginalized groups and how that intersects with the, the heat, the increased heat. So, Linda, uh, you anticipate, like you said, within a matter of weeks, we'll have an idea of the working draft we, that we could take a look at? Well, it, it'll be weeks until we can get our initial suggestions put together and, and take to our executive. It'll be longer than that before we get everything, you know, really nailed down and approved. So, so probably not in our June meeting that we could take a look at it. So we'll, we'll just imagine probably in July. I just wanted to set expectations for folks is, is probably what we're sure. going to be looking at. Um, any, any other further questions? So I thank you very much. I just wanted to say... Uh, uh, for myself, thank you so much, Linda, uh, for, for continuing, continuing this process, a very important piece for a lot of folks. I wanted to open it up to members of the public. Uh, former representative, former state representative Elizabeth Bishop is here, and it looks like she wants to say a few words, so if you could please uh, come to the podium. Linda, we got a question from uh, somebody here in the audience, or statement, rather. Thank you, Mr. Pompelli. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Bishop. I live at 8518 East Long Lake Street. And I also am the president of the board of ICT Trees Incorporated. And so I'm here to represent that body and to learn. I'm very interested in this report. I am, frankly, a teensy bit perplexed as to why the NASA study needs to hold up the basic report, which was presented in draft form, I think in April of 2022, if I'm not mistaken. And that seems to me like it would be the baseline, and the information from the NASA study uh, would be like phase two, uh, rather than waiting for the basic draft. The way I interpret it, I've read through it, I haven't studied it a great deal, is that it, the concept is to keep the tree canopy evergreen and not allow it 
as is happening now, to decrease because we're not replacing trees at the rate that they are diminishing and, and uh, succumbing to winter kill um, disease and so forth. <coughs> not just development. That's always looked at as, oh, it's destroying the, the canopy. It, there are trees out there aging out. And a process that keeps that canopy evergreen and allows us to not only keep it steady, but actually expand it. And, and an expansion relative to environmental justice seems to be the perfect choice. Um, I have a, a silly question. <laughs> Linda, what's your last name? It's Beachy hyphen T is B like boy, E A C H Y hyphen H U G H E S. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I may want to talk with you <laughs> at some point in the future. Um, the other thing, the discussion earlier about Sleepy Hollow stirred a memory, and I'm just going to throw this out there for the record. Um, a couple of times, I believe it was, I attended ceremonies at Wesley that was a commemorative tree planting in, uh, to commemorate infants that died in sudden infant death syndrome. So there should be a tree, maybe two, because I think I attended those twice. This was back when I was serving as a staff person for Congressman Dan Glickman. So we're talking the 80s. Uh, they, they should be labeled most likely, I would say, on the Wesley campus rather than public, but it is also possible they're in the park we've been talking about, just remotely possible. Just wanted to mention that. And I had another couple of things real quick, if you're going to give me a little leeway sure. to broaden the discussion. Um, a Saturday a week ago, we, uh, I See Trees Incorporated conducted a, an urban tree fest in the Delano Green Space. And there's a couple of things I'd like to talk to you real quick about that. One is, we'd like to express our deep appreciation to the park department and particularly to the um, forestry division and Gary Ferris and his crew because they were enormous help to us. We scheduled a work day on a cold Saturday as it turned out. We had our donuts and coffee, donned our jackets and hats and went out to clean up the green space and discovered that it had been done and done well. And at the last minute not only did they auger a hole for the tree planting that we wanted to do with a tree donated by Hillside Nursery. Um, but they filled in some holes that we were worried might be tree has or trip hazards. And it was an ex thanks in part to wonderful weather. We had an extremely successful tree fest. And lastly, I would like to um, ask that as we go forward and look at parks and, and examine the, the loss sometimes of some areas of parks, that you consider what we call the Delano Green Space as a future park. It's a wonderful vest pocket park and is, is treasured by that <coughs> neighborhood, which they made obvious Saturday a week ago. And I'm anxious to follow along with the tree policy as it's developed and would like to collaborate whenever possible, answer questions, and definitely learn more about what the city is doing. I know this is happening all across the country, and I believe that um, Wichita is on board to make our community proud with the way that we treat the environment and develop options and opportunities for citizens to enjoy nature and recreate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Um, so I believe we don't have any necessary, necessarily a motion on this. Just to, uh, that was just uh, advising on that, correct? Yeah, we would just definitely want to give an update. And then 
after you close out this topic, there was an item that uh, that you brought up in regards to that green space, um, which I want to make a comment on. Okay. All right. Let's um, move into the Clap Park update then. That'd be Tim. <coughs> Alrighty, well, uh, thank you for having me. Um, here to give a, uh, an update on the LW Clap Park uh, master plan improvements. Um, so really the point of this uh, is to just really give you an update, kind of have a pulse check on exactly where we are uh, on this project. So a little bit of background, and I know it, it's been a while since we've uh, probably talked about claps, so just kind of bear with me as I go through to kind of make sure we get everyone up on the same page and kind of help inform exactly where we're going. Um, so as many of, as most of you know, uh, the park used to be a former golf course. It's located in District 3 on South Oliver and East Harry. Um, the golf course closed in 2019 uh, following a 2018 golf sustainability review. Uh, here off to the right is uh, a photo of, of the park as it exists today. A little bit of background, uh, there are community engagement um, events that were held in early 2019 uh, to talk about exactly what's next for the park in 2000, and, excuse me, in 2020, uh, the LW Cloud Master Plan was started and led by the consultant firm um, Confluence. So Confluence uh, was able to, through engagement, uh, obviously as you can tell that was partly through the pandemic, um, but they developed a master plan um, and, and one of the things through the different surveys that they did through this master plan, uh, which is usually great when these master plans because you really get to understand kind of the, the heartbeat or kind of engaging with the community on, on what they, what some of the thoughts are. And, and some of those uh, really important items were natural open green space, uh, shade structures, uh, places to gather, and a dog park area or cafe. So since the master plan approval, we've heard routinely from people uh, in the public uh, the, the desire to keep it a natural uh, atmosphere, keep the park uh, really the kind of gym that it is. There's so many mature trees out there um, and try to limit the disturbance deep into the park as much as possible to help maintain uh, its atmosphere. You don't really get a chance to go and just walk on golf courses if you're not playing golf. You know, you just don't really have that opportunity and having this be in a former golf course that's really unique experience, especially uh, pretty much in a very urban area. Uh, so kind of what's exactly happening right now, there is a lot of disc golf being played out there. Uh, the cross country communities uh, have been utilizing this park for different uh, events, training, things like that. There are a lot of walkers and runners that use the park. Uh, you can see youth getting engaged there in the lower photo with disc golf. Uh, the clubhouse that was there is being uh, rented out by Ducks Flying Discs and they uh, sell out of there and uh, there's a lot of energy into the park. Uh, Dry Creek runs through the park site um, and if you've been out there you know that there are more bridges that probably need to be out there. It made sense when it was a golf course. It's not a golf course now. Um, you can see there's a lot of erosion going on through there um, that's undermining the structures, uh, which is a, obviously a huge safety risk. So that's something that needs to be addressed. Um, so kind of due to feedback from the public and the deterioration of the bridges, uh, phase one funds are, will be used to uh, improve the, the bridges and the creek, uh, build an, an inclusive playground, Parking lot improvements, we imagine that'll probably be pretty minor improvements to the parking lot considering that it, it functions pretty well. We wanna make sure we put money into the, into the safety aspect and help uh, get a playground there that uh, really serves that community and a dog park. Um, we hear routinely that everyone wants a dog park and there's uh, a lot of desire for that. We know that it helps build community spaces and 
uh, that's one of the things that uh, is being, their funds will be used for in this first phase. Uh, so landscape architecture firm Confluence, who did the phase one, or excuse me, who did the master plan, we have them under contract uh, for the phase one improvements. So they're actively designing um, an art consultant and artist will be part of that team because we are receiving art funding for the project, uh, which is really great. Uh, it's always great to get art into these spaces, uh, especially big projects like these. So an overall site, uh, just to kind of give you some context for it, um, the blue line is the water channel. Uh, you can see these different kind of blue, or excuse me, black bridges. Those are existing ones, or excuse me, those are proposed ones. Um, you can see it here, the light blue trails. So one of the things that through analysis of this was that the trails don't exactly make sense for if you're just walking around as a regular everyday user. Um, connecting them and making sure that you can get loops in. For walkers, that's a big thing is being able to get loops in, uh, go and connect different pieces. Because as, uh, as a golf course, it worked fine. But as for someone using it as a walker, walking their dogs, taking kids out, it doesn't really work that, that well. Uh, so that's one of the improvements is making sure that we connect the, the pathways in places that make sense and also keeping bridges in locations that make sense. Uh, we've done analysis on the different bridges and are working with the uh, Army Corps of Engineers uh, to determine what improvements we need to make out there for these, for these bridges. So the goal is to minimize the, keep the bridges that are, are in good condition, remove the ones or consolidate the ones that uh, can be consolidated or removed um, with the goal of kind of minimizing our impact or need uh, for future maintenance. Up here at the top, you can see uh, a, a quick concept of the playground, for the inclusive playground. Uh, originally, I think in the master plan, it was further deep into the park, so listening to the different community feedback that we've had, so keeping it further north, close to the clubhouse, and kind of having some eyes on the park up here makes a lot of sense. Over here on the west side of the park, uh, that will be where the uh, dog park will go, along with a parking lot here. So we haven't gotten into the nitty gritty details on exactly the layout of, of it. We're still very early in the schematic design, so we're basically looking at kind of the landforms. Does this look good here? Maybe we twist it here. Maybe there's four pins, maybe there's three pins. So that's things that we're doing right now. It's still pretty early, so hoping to get feedback uh, on these different things. And um, you know, we're still pretty early. Uh, as well as the, um, the parking lot, that's something that's still in flux right now. We're still figuring out how much demand we're gonna need for it. Uh, we know that there's a school to the north and there's gonna be impact from that on a, during the school year. So these things are, are some of the things that we are uh, thinking through uh, as we continue design. So kind of going into the big, the big thing, the playground. Um, we want this to be a signature playground. We want this to be a playground that um, People that come to visit Wichita will remember, kids will remember, um, memories will be made here. Um, I know that I have memories of playing at um, Riverside Park, um, and we kind of want those same things here. These different imaginative ideas, uh, really place making here, especially in this part of town, especially <coughs> on this uh, beautiful site too. So again, these are still early concepts, but. Uh, looking at different uh, shade elements, different climbing towers, more of a nature theme. Again, not completely sold on these, but still being very loose to having, uh, kind of painting the picture or getting that North Star. So this one's probably a little bit easier to read. Um, so this is in plan view, and uh, to the right of your screen is to the north. You can see over here, this is the existing clubhouse and then parking lot over here. The parking lot is actually in pretty good shape, um, so we don't think that spending money on the play on excuse me on the parking lot really makes a whole lot of sense when we can really make a really really cool playground here. That's inclusive. That has different areas for uh, different needs and abilities to um, to play and be able to uh, create those memories with with all sorts of ages and abilities. So again, we're still pretty early in this. We want to engage with 
uh, different stakeholders to make sure that we're on the same, we're on the right track here. But you can see elevated features are really some one of the things that we really want to focus on because those elevated features. Unknown stay. participant is now exiting. <laughs> um, the uh, elevated elevated structures are really kind of help. Uh, unlock those play ideas and get kids involved and they also kind of provide that destination point uh, to draw folks in. So a few more um, just quick uh, renderings here. So I think one of the big things to note with our ideas or some of the main concepts that we're holding on to are creating different spaces for different um, for different groups or kids to be able to feel safe in. A lot of times um, kids can feel overwhelmed when they're thrown into something, so having different spaces and pockets for them to play in uh, is really important for, for us uh, as we move forward through this design. So a few more slides here. Um, so a lot of different features, a lot of different um, changes in topography and things like that, so hoping to make this a, a unique and signature playground, uh, nothing that we have in our system today. Uh, so what are our next steps uh, is to continue with the art consultant artists uh, through the selection process. Um, we we want to make sure that we get them involved early on, so we don't want to get super deep into the design and then pull them in. That's not really the goal of this. So right now, we're kind of staying at kind of this area or this kind of level that we are, and then bringing in the art consultants and artists uh, to help develop these ideas together. Uh, next would be to work with the nearby schools um, to find a time to meet with them and get their feedback. Um, you can't, you know, it, you can design everything, but you can't really predict what kids are going to do or what exactly they want. So um, that's really who this is for. So we need to make sure that we get their feedback. Uh, maybe they have great ideas that we maybe would have never thought of. So um, there are constituents and they're there who we need to get buy-in from. Um, we're also working with the. Uh, Army Corps of Engineers for the bridge and creek modification. That's a big one because uh, we want the bridges to be safe. We want to make sure that we're not uh, damaging the creek. We want to make sure that's a healthy creek and make sure that the bridges um, meet their requirements. We're planning on installing uh, 36 uh, disc golf tee pads here in May, which I know the disc golf community is going to be super excited about. Um, they believe this is going to be a signature course, two courses actually, and it's going to make a huge difference in the local and really state and regional wide um, disc golf community. And also making modifications uh, to accommodate cross country events, which we're working with WSU and a number of other partners for that. Uh, so really this uh, project has kind of expanded into um, accommodating different groups that maybe we didn't realize that were going to um, find a home in this park. I'll right, stand for any questions. Questions for staff. Tim, you didn't say anything about landscaping in there, and I'd like to encourage some native plants, pollinator gardens, wildflower areas like that, if we can include something like that. Yeah, no, I think that that's something that we'd like to get into. I think having those areas, especially um, it, kind of that nature thing with the playground and with the park. So I think once we get further into design, I can see that being. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't been down there. I, yeah. I, I mean, it's old golf course, so it must be a huge area. I can see it on the map. So there's probably a tiny little pocket we could put some pollinator gardens in. No, I, I think there's definitely a lot of spaces there we could do that. I was talking to uh, Chris Durant, that is yep. uh, the renter over there. <clears throat> And there's definitely some flower beds nearby or, or by the uh, clubhouse that they want to uh, do a project like that. So um, that's something that we're looking at. But in general, um, the dollars are going for a dog park. There's not a whole lot of landscaping for the dog park. In general, there's uh, repairs that need to be done to the walking paths and to the bridges, which doesn't really have a whole lot of landscaping to that. And in general, a lot of money is going. A lot of money is going to the playgrounds. That's going to have some some landscaping, uh, but more so, it's really going towards the functionality of the park. So, using these dollars wisely and uh, on things that we really need, um, 
there's other opportunities that we can look at in regards to doing some fundraising, going for grants, and just getting uh, a sweat equity from the community to help yep. us with uh, those I type of things. Yep. Help with that. yep. You know, dovetailing on that, Tim, I think that possibly, possi possibly the sustainability board might have some input and some feedback that might go along with what you're saying and might have some very good ideas to, of how to help. So that just be my recommendation. Do we have any further questions for staff? Well, uh, I don't think we have any uh, uh, motion on this one then. So thank you very much for your presentation today. Thank you. Just a few more updates. I think we're going to take this to oh, um, Design Council and, yep. and probably to the DAB as well. And um, I like the idea of taking it to the sustainability board. So yeah. we'll definitely do that. And um, Tim is working really hard to get a connection with the school district. And we're going to make a visit to the kids and get some ideas from them. Super. Thank you so much. All right, uh, folks, since we're running over time today, I would like to propose that we kick it down. Like we can take. Um, I want to thank everybody who presented or, or prepared propo uh, presentations for today, but I think that we'll just get it in an email form for all of the, uh, the very good news from golf, for example, I'm, I'm sure we'd like to, to hear about, but we'll just wait until next month. Katie, thank you so much for coming back and joining us. It's good to have you back. Um, but I, I feel like uh, we can all spend time better uh, just um, waiting on next month. But I do want to discuss a couple things. Uh, during the president's update. Um, I, I want to say thank you very much to everybody. Most everybody in this room was at the kayak event last week. How fun was that? Uh, we got to see Troy out in, uh, I'm disappointed we don't have it up and ready on cake. Troy gave an interview uh, talking about our, our kayak station. Do you want to have any kind of, you have any kind of thoughts on how we did after action? So we had a, a little bit of a report this morning and uh, I think, Katie, had, you had mentioned that there was somewhere in the neighborhood about 25 rentals in total, uh, 35 rentals wow. since we did the, the show. Gosh. Um, so since we did the ribbon cutting. So yeah, um, what I'm kind of looking for is roughly about uh, 400 rentals a year, and that'll get us to a great break-even point. Okay. Yep. That, that really sounds like a, a great start. So again, uh, if you have not checked out the self-service kayak stations at O.J. Watson and uh, by the river at Old Gander Mountain uh, and Riverside Tennis Center, please do. It's uh, really neat. And I believe we've got a, a discount code Parks and Rec, capital P, capital R. will get you a discount for your first session on the kayak. So please give that a try. Um, I wanted to, just because it was brought up, ask you a quick question, Troy, what the update was, if we have one on the Delano Green Space project, if we have any kind of new news on that, because I know uh, Representative Bishop had mentioned something about Delano, and I just, that reminded me. So, uh, you, you brought up a very good topic in regards to, um, can we consider that parkland? <clears throat> and. It's turned out to be parkland. It's, it's used as parkland, it's managed as parkland, it's developed uh, for the neighborhood to become a park. You guys have turned it into a park. Um, so unfortunately, some of your, your buddies have left, mm. but uh, maybe next time, if you guys would like to set that as a motion to turn that into designated parkland, we could go back and I think it would be something that would be pretty simple for us to go to consent at the council and we can change the designation um, into a designated parkland. Now I think part of it is also right away and so um, obviously that part, portion of the park couldn't change um, but there's the space there that's being used as Great. Well, I, the, the question I had I guess, is, and maybe I wasn't clear, I just wanted to, that project that we had discussed regarding like the um, there was going to be that path that went all the way through Delano. The, through exposition, you know, that, please. Okay, so we're talking about a different uh, space. That was actually the question I had. It was like, I, I love talking about that, and I think we yeah. should pursue that. I, yeah. I, fantastic. But the other piece, I, I, I wanted an update on that. So as part of the hike and bike trail, it's, it's going through um, uh, an old railroad track that's actually going through Delano. Yeah. Um, we have 
finalized the, the plans. I think you guys seen that. Um, I'm not sure where we're at with the bidding because engineering is kind of managing that for us. Uh, I could get an update um, for next month. Okay, okay. great. What, is the, what, what was the park land that you were talking about, Troy? It's the park land that Elizabeth was working on uh, where they hosted their little event. And it's probably all together about maybe two acres worth of space. I'm not too sure. One and a half. What, what intersection are, is closest to the in, entrance? McLean and Fern or something. I was trying to find it when I went. <laughs> so it's on the north side, roughly? It's between Fern and Vine along McLean Street. Got it. By the baseball it's diamond. The baseball. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, I see. Is there room for a playground there somewhere? Uh, I, mean, that, I know the, I mean, the whole street, street is right there. Yeah. It's it, a pocket for but sure, you but put it's got some fencing or something. We'd, we'd have to be really uh, creative in how we want to do that. And, and, and it can be done. Um, we have another park that is on a very busy street that has fencing around it that has a playground on it. Um, so it could be done. Um, I don't have the budget right now to put a playground in there. Well, uh, you that always was, wish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, um, like I mentioned, right now it's not designated as parkland, and that might be the first step. Sure. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a good spot. So, okay, well, um, the last piece I wanted to make certain that I mentioned before we move forward was uh, I believe next month we will be having park board elections. It'll be next month, so. I intend to run for another term. I welcome other folks if they're interested in running as well. Uh, but regardless, I'm looking to meet with everybody on the board as I have in the past. <coughs> I'm really interested in collaborating with this board. I feel like I'm, I'm so fortunate to serve with you all uh, because everybody has diverse uh, interests and abilities. And I think that over the next year, what I'd really like to establish is, is what your goals for the next year are individually and see how we can collectively come together um, and lay out what that framework looks like. So that's gonna be my, you know, my position next year and I'd really like to work with you in this capacity moving forward. Uh, finally, I will turn it over to Troy and the thing I would hope that we could uh, just possibly get a statement on, I think all of us had seen the Wichita Eagle over the weekend i um, like to welcome their, their uh, reporter here today, uh, but I just wanted to uh, give the opportunity to discuss a little bit about the story that was in the paper um, regarding the, the issues with our unhoused population and how we are going to be uh, changing department policy with regard to how we handle our cleanups. Um, I think that uh, from my perspective, uh, and, and, and I'd welcome the conversation from my perspective, of course, I think everybody, what I think we see is everybody agrees the status quo is not working and uh, moving forward uh, with a, not only a humane solution, but one that uh, residents and, and all of our population can feel safe and feel heard uh, and make certain that we are not just uh, triaging and putting a Band-Aid on a problem I think this is a large, complex problem. We just happen to, I mean, there, there's issues that, that the state needs to step up, quite frankly, with some of these needs. We're talking about needs that go beyond uh, the capacities of, of one department in the city. Of course, these are big systemic issues, um, but we have to treat all of our folks with dignity and with respect um, and recognize that we have limitations. So. I'm very grateful to the board for being receptive to that discussion in the past. I look forward to, in the future, continuing on, uh, to collaborate with uh, our city partners and community partners on how we find an answer that's long-lasting. I'd imagine, hopefully, 10 years from now, we will be at that future state where this will be solved. This will be something that we can look back and say we came together, uh, but there's going to be a difficult transition period, and we've got to come together and recognize that the status quo isn't working and, and we all want better. So I wanted to be able to turn it over to Troy and see if you had any other additional comments you'd like to add about this, this piece. I do not. Okay. Do you have any other comments that you'd like to add for the director's update? Um, not really. Okay. No. All right. Well, then I will uh, go ahead. Seeing nothing else, I will go ahead and make a motion. Uh, to adjourn. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the table. All those in favor, please vote aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. The ayes have it. We are adjourned. Thank you very much.